Hello everyone and welcome to another Blender Made Easy tutorial. Today we're going to be creating this clock animation. The method that we'll be using involves a couple of different constraints and drivers which allows us to very easily animate the clock. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started. So here we are in a brand new scene. Let's go ahead and get started by deleting the default cube and then we'll press Shift A, add in a mesh and a circle. Let's quickly model the clock here and then we'll start working on the constraints and mechanisms of the clock. So with the circle selected, I'm gonna open up the bottom window down here, set the number of vertices to 256. That's gonna give us a nice smooth circle. Let's rotate this 90 degrees along the X axis so it's standing upright. Then in edit mode, I'm gonna hit E to extrude, scale this down a little bit, E to extrude to go backwards and lock it towards the Y axis. Then on the top here, I'll just press E to extrude right here, drag it backwards and then press F to fill in a face. Then in the middle here, I'll hold the Alt key, select that ring, and then press F again to fill in a face, and now we have a complete mesh. Press A to select everything and hit Shift N to recalculate those normals just in case they're messed up. And now we can start working on the seconds and hours and other parts of the clock. In front view, I'm gonna hit Z and go into the wireframe, and let's first add the hour increments on our clock. To do that, we'll add in a new cube, Scale this cube down a little bit, scale it along the X so it's a bit skinnier, something like that, and then drag it up so it's sitting right at the 12 hour mark. On this side, we're going to scale it along the Y and then drag it inside our clock right about there is probably good. Now in order to get this to go all the way around our clock, we can use a very easy method using an array modifier. We'll jump over to the modifier tab, select add modifier, generate and use an array. Now, instead of using the relative offset, we're gonna be using the object offset. So go ahead and open this up, and for our object, we're gonna press Shift A, go over to Empty, and add in a new plane axis. Scale this down a bit, and then press Control A and apply the scale. We need to also apply the scale to this object as well, so hit Control A and apply the scale. Then for the object offset, use the eyedropper tool and select the Empty. Now if this happens, that's because we need to change the origin point from right there over towards the center of the grid. We can do that by right clicking, set origin to 3D cursor. Now if we select the empty and we rotate this, you're gonna notice that the hour is rotating, which is exactly what we want. So for the rotation, we need to do 30 degrees because every 30 degrees, that is a new hour. So hit R, then Y and type 30 and enter. Then select the cube and for the count, go all the way up to 12. We're gonna do this exact same thing for the seconds and minute increments. So go ahead and shift D this cube here. In edit mode, I'm just going to select this, drag it upwards, and then also press A and then scale it along the X so it's a bit skinnier, something like that. We're gonna need a new empty object to rotate it at the correct degree amount. So we'll add in a new empty scale this down a bit, and then again, press Control A and apply the scale to it. The degree increments for every minute and second of the clock, it's six degrees. So with this empty selected, hit R, then Y, and type six and enter. Then with the second increment uh, object selected, go ahead and change the empty to empty 001. And then for the count, go all the way up to 60. And there we go, now we have a clock and that's looking pretty good. Next up, we're gonna be adding in the second minute and hour hands. So I'm gonna press Shift A, we'll do the hour one first, add in a new cube, scale this cube down to be about the size that you want, somewhere around there I think is good. Then in edit mode, I'm just gonna box select that top part, drag this up, and this is going to be the hour hand. On the side here, I'm going to scale it along the Y so it's a bit skinnier, something like that and then drag it backwards until it reaches the clock right about there. Then we'll press Shift D, right click, G and then Y, drag this forward. This is gonna be the minute hand. We'll scale this along the X so it's a bit skinnier. Then on the top here, we'll drag this face upwards. Right about there is good. And then finally, one more time, Shift D, drag it forwards, scale it along the X axis, and then we'll drag this part up until it reaches the seconds, and this is the second hand. So right about there is good. And then also I'm gonna scale it along the Y. Now that we have all of the objects in our scene, let's start working on the mechanics of our clock. 
In front view, what we need to do is first add a controller object. I'm going to press Shift A, add in a new empty plane axis scale it down and drag it upwards. This is going to be our main controller and we'll name it over here in the outliner. We'll just call it main. What we need to do first is select the hour hand. And what I want is for every 100 meters that this empty moves, I want the hour hand to go all the way around 360 degrees. Now, in order for that to happen, we need to select our hour hand, jump over to the constraints tab, add a new constraint and then select transformation. For the target, it's going to be the main object right here. Turn on extrapolate because this will allow us to go backwards or forwards depending on what we want and the rotation will still work properly. We're going to open up map from and map to. We're mapping from the location of our empty right here along the X axis. So for the max value, we're going to go with 100 and then we're taking that location and then mapping it to the rotation of our hour hand. So switch it over to rotation. We're taking the source value along the rotation of the Y. So go over to here, but we're taking it from the X. So switch it over to X. And then for the max value, type in 360 degrees. So now what happens is if we select our empty in the properties here, I'll just drag up the X value. You're going to see the hour hand is rotating all the way around once we reach that 100 meter mark. Now, basically, we're going to do that same thing for the minute hand. So go ahead and select it, add a new constraint. We're going to go transformation for the target. This time, we're going to use the hour hand for the target, so which is cube 002 right here. Turn on extrapolate. And this time, instead of mapping from the location, we're going to map the rotation of our hour hand to the rotation of our minute hand. So the rotation here is rotating along the Y axis. So over here, we're going to type in 30 degrees because remember at the start, every 30 degrees is the hour. And then underneath here, we're mapping the source from the Y. So leave it on Y. And we want the minute hand to go all the way around every time it reaches 30 degrees. So type in 360 for the max value. Let's go ahead and test this by dragging the empty over to the right. And you're going to see once we go all the way around right at 30 degrees, the minute hand closes back at the top, which is exactly what we want. Finally, for the seconds, we're going to do that exact same thing. Add a new constraint transformation for the target. We're going to use the minute hand this time. So cube 003, turn on extrapolate, and then we're going to map from the rotation. This time we're going to do every six degrees because remember every six degrees, that is a new minute or second. So for the max value, we're going to go six degrees. Then we're mapping it to the rotation of our second hand. And this time we're going to go 360 again. So now if we select our empty G and then X, and then we rotate it, you're going to see for every time the minute hits that six degree mark, the second hand goes all the way around just like that. Now, one thing I want to change with our clock is the second hand, because at the moment, if we zoom in here and move this, you're going to notice the second hand is moving very smoothly. Now, some clocks probably have this effect where it moves smoothly all the way around, but the majority of clocks actually snap to every single second for that second hand. Now, in order to get that snapping effect to work in Blender, we're going to be adding in a new driver. First off though, we need a new controller object. So I'm going to hit shift a, add in a plane axis, scale this down and then drag this up and place it right about here. We're going to come over to the top here and in the outliner, this is going to be the second controller. We're actually going to be deleting this transformation constraint from the second hand and applying it to the controller right here. So for in order for that to happen, select the second controller, select the second hand, and then over here in the constraints tab, click on copy to selected. And now if we select our empty here, it has that exact constraint. Then with the second hand selected, go ahead and delete it. We're not going to need that anymore. If we select our main controller now and rotate this, the empty is rotating as you can see. So what we need to do now is map the rotation from this empty and basically do a rounding operation with the second hand. So it snaps to every single second degree increment. So over here in the properties tab by hitting N, we're going to go over to the Y rotation, right click, and then add in a new driver. For the object, we're going to type in second and use the second controller. 
we're not taking the X location, we're taking the Y rotation. So switch it over to Y rotation. And then for the expression right here, we'll just type out the whole thing and then I'll explain kind of what's happening. So we're gonna type in round, then parentheses VAR, which is the value of the rotation. We're gonna divide it by radians. Radians is the value that uh, Blender uses for rotations. It doesn't use degrees, it uses radians. We're gonna times this by six, so type in parentheses and then six in the middle. Then another parentheses to close that off. Hit space and then do times, and we're gonna times this by radians once again, and in the parentheses type in six just like that. Basically what is happening is we're taking the value, which is VAR, the value of the rotation of the empty, we're dividing it by the six degrees, which is radian six. Again, we're converting degrees over to radians, and that is what this operation does. We're dividing it, and then we're rounding it to the nearest uh, value. So instead of using a decimal, we're using an actual value, and then we're timesing it back up to the value that it should be. If that didn't really make sense to you, here's a better way and easier way to kind of understand exactly what's happening with this operation. Let's say you want to snap numbers to the nearest 10 and you have a value of 27 and you want it to snap to 30 because that's the closest value. Basically, you're gonna take that value of 27, divide it by 10, that's gonna give you 2.7. Then you're rounding it, so that will give you three. Then you're taking that three value and timesing it by 10 again and that's gonna give you the value of 30. And that's the exact same thing that we're doing here. Now, if we take the controller, the main controller and press G and X, you're gonna see it snaps to every single second just like that. Now that we have a working clock in our scene, let's quickly animate it using this main empty controller right here. What I want for this animation is for three seconds to pass by right about here, and then I want it to speed it up going all the way around 12 hours until the second hand reaches right about here, and then we're gonna slow it down and then it's gonna repeat just like that. For three seconds to pass in our animation, we need to jump to frame 72 right here since we're working at 24 frames a second. With this empty selected, I'm gonna hit G and then X and holding shift, I'm gonna go one, two, and three, and then hit K and add in another location keyframe. So this is the result now. There we go. And then right when that happens, I want to speed it upwards. Next, we need to figure out how long we want our animation to be. I want mine to be about 10 seconds long. So from here, we're gonna go plus 240 frames. So that gives us a value of 320. Let's bring up the end frame. And then on frame 320, let's set the X all the way up to 100. And then we'll check this, press G and then X and drag it backwards till we get three seconds, one, two, and three press K and then add in a location keyframe. Then with this value, we'll go plus 72. We'll set the X to exactly 100 now, and then hit K and then add in another location keyframe. If we play our animation, you're gonna notice that the first second is way longer than it should be. And that's basically because the interpolation between these keyframes is on a curve, and we can fix that by opening up a new window by clicking and dragging the top right, switching it to the graph editor. We can open up this and we can actually delete everything but the X uh, location. So go ahead and delete everything but the X. We'll select normalize so we can see exactly what we're doing. With this keyframe selected, the very first, we're gonna hit S and then hit zero to scale it down to zero. Now this should work properly, right about 24 frames it should snap. Since it's kind of doing a rounding operation, it might be not exactly 24 frames but now this should work a bit better. Then we'll select this handle, drag this to the right to give us a smoother transition. We'll do the same thing up top here. Select this handle, drag this to the left. That should give us a nice steep curve and then it slows down at the end. And then finally select this, this keyframe right here, S zero and enter. So now this should look pretty good just like that. We'll set the end frame right at frame 385. So right here, 385. And that should give us a nice seamless animation. The animation is done, so let's go ahead and work on the lighting materials and then render out an animation. For the lighting for the scene, let's press Shift A, go over to Mesh, and then add in a plane. This is gonna be the background. 
We'll rotate it, place it behind the clock, and scale it up a bit somewhere around there. With the default lamp, let's select it and change it over to a area light. Then in the side view, we'll rotate this, bring up the size a bit somewhere around here or so. Let's take a look at that and see what that looks like. The power is a bit too much. Maybe we can go down to around 150. That looks pretty good, something around there. Then we'll press Shift D, rotate this on this side, and then bring up the sides much bigger. This is gonna be more of a fill light. So set both of these sides to around three. And then for the strength of it, we're gonna go down to around 50 or so. That looks pretty good. For the camera, I'm gonna jump into the front view and then hit Control Alt Numpad Zero to snap the camera to place, select it, and then just drag it down somewhere around here or so. That looks pretty good. Now for the materials, let's go ahead and select our clock, create a new one. This is gonna be the outside of the clock and we're gonna set the metallic all the way up to one and then the roughness down to around 0.1. For the inside of the clock, go into edit mode and then with face select mode selected, you can select that inside face. We'll create a new material and then assign it right there. So now the inside is white. For the rest of the objects, we're gonna select the hour markers, the second and minute markers, and then all of the different hands. We'll create a new material and set the base color all the way down to black. Hit Control or Command L and then link materials. So now this should be the result. What you can also do to smooth out this edge right here is with the frame selected, you can add in a generate bevel modifier. Bring the amount down until we get a nice bevel. And then for these segments, we can go up to like 16 and then you can also right click and shade that smooth and that should give us a much better reflection with the lighting. I also added this little cylinder right here for the middle part and for this you can add in the metallic shader just like that and that gives us a nice look. For the EV settings we can jump over to the render settings. We'll turn on ray tracing to get some nice reflections. Turn on motion blur and for the amount right here we're going to we're going to go much lower down to 0.1. For the max blur up to 64 and then for the steps i'm also going to use 64 and that should give us a nice blur for our clock right here underneath the color management we can set the look to high contrast and that's basically all you really need to do if you want to find out how i did those different camera angles and the nice depth of field i created a tutorial over on my patreon with the blend file also if you wanted to grab that i'll put the link in the description but thank you very much for watching this tutorial. If you made it all the way to the end and created something cool, feel free to send it to me on Instagram at BlenderMadeEasy. If you have other ideas for tutorials you would like to see, let me know in the comments down below. That's going to do it. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.